So, I've been using Duolingo to learn Japanese for over 800 days now, and I've gathered a lot of thoughts about whether or not you should use Duolingo to learn Japanese. And I was going to make this video extremely long again by including literally every single thought I had, but honestly, the answer to the question is actually quite simple. Do you like using Duolingo? No? Well, honestly, then just don't use it, it's not going to be worth it for you. However, if you like using Duolingo, then by all means go ahead and use it, there is honestly nothing to lose. Everything you do contributes to your proficiency to some extent in the long run, and learning Japanese is a very, very long run. You're better off using tools which you actually enjoy using as they keep you consistent, rather than something that might be a bit more time efficient but makes you wanna quit learning. But okay, let's go into a bit more detail as to why. The Duolingo Japanese course, as it stands in 2021, currently has about 3200 words, 1350 kanji, 731 lessons and 131 skills. That actually means that the Japanese course is one of the longest courses on Duolingo now. A lot longer than it used to be back when I got started in 2018. And to put it into perspective, the general rumor is that JLPT N3 requires about 3700 words and 650 kanji. So does this mean that when you finish Duolingo, you're basically going to be N3 at Japanese. <laughs> no, most likely not. Although, that depends on how much studying you do outside of Duolingo. And I'd like to say right now that when you use Duolingo to learn Japanese, it's really recommended that you don't use it as the only resource. To bring myself as an example, I also started out learning Japanese on Duolingo, and after about two weeks, I started using the Core 2K6K deck on Anki for additional vocabulary, and the Take Kim's Guide to Learning Japanese for grammar. You, of course, don't have to use what I used, as there are a lot of other resources as well which you can use, such as Funny Kani for vocabulary and Genki textbooks for grammar. Just find something that works for you and stick to it. And to put my own current level of Japanese into perspective, I'm pretty confident that I could pass the N3 test right now without big issues. But well, I have taken over 5000 vocabulary cards across various texts on Anki, and most of my grammar I learned through other resources. Not to mention, I've immersed in the language a bit as well. So, how much Duolingo has actually contributed to my Japanese past the beginning stage is really hard to tell. But honestly, I assume that definitely not as much as the other resources. This still doesn't necessarily mean that Duolingo is useless though. I do believe that you can in fact learn Japanese with Duolingo, but you obviously won't become fluent. And that's for the same reason you won't become fluent when you finish a Genki textbook. It will eventually run out of pages and it only has so much it can teach you before that happens. However, getting you fluent in Japanese is not what Duolingo is designed for. The true value of Duolingo is getting you started in a language. Because what even is Duolingo? It describes itself as a gamified approach to language learning with short and fun lessons. <laughs> and it tries to make the mental barrier of entry for getting into the first lesson very low. Good morning, people. You don't even need to register an account anymore, so it only takes a few clicks to get started. Duolingo also tries to keep you consistent by having a strike system, and a pretty aggressive notification approach. So, how I see it, Duolingo optimizes for getting you started in a beginner and casual friendly way, especially if it's your first time self-studying a language. But okay, getting started aside, how long should you use Duolingo for? And why does everybody keep saying that Duolingo is a terrible resource? Well, here's my experience with Duolingo. In the beginning, Duolingo felt pretty useful for me. I did about 3 to 5 lessons per day, moving and killing one lesson at a time. It took me about 40 hours or 160 days to complete and kill the entire Japanese tree. But even back then, I saw issues with the course and felt like it's better if I focus primarily on other resources. That's why, after finishing the tree for the first time, I've been mostly doing one lesson per day. Now that the fourth version of the course has finally come out and having finally finished it, I'm glad that the course is much longer than it used to be, however, the main issues have not been fixed. And actually, I don't think they will ever be fixed, because they come from the format of Duolingo itself, not the course. To explain what I mean, let's go over the main exercises of Duolingo, being Japanese to English translation, English to Japanese translation, match the pairs, pairs? Today's words are pear, the fruit, pear, to trim, and pear, meaning chew, like a pair of shoes. To this fucking language, man. 
and of course, listening exercises. Just to get this out of the way, as Duolingo is using a admittedly impressive but not perfect text-to-speech engine, the listening exercises are completely useless. So I recommend skipping them or muting your Duolingo completely. As for the match the pairs exercises, I feel like they were fantastic in the beginning for learning hiragana and katakana, but now they feel incredibly ineffective for learning new words. And in general, I feel like Duolingo is terrible for learning Japanese vocabulary. In fact, very often I come out of the lesson without even knowing the reading or meaning of a new word, because it was never properly introduced. Honestly, it feels as if I've barely learned any new words at all with Duolingo during the intermediate stage. To be fair, I had already learned most of them through Anki, but at the same time, learning new vocabulary with Anki feels and is so much more direct and effective. When it comes to the output exercises, they are actually pretty decent. As a beginner, playing around with the language as if using building blocks is a great way to build a more intuitive understanding of the language. However, one of the most common complaints for the Duolingo Japanese course is the lack of grammar explanations, which is also the primary reason why you should use an external resource for grammar. On top of that, during the intermediate stages, as long as you get enough input, your output ability should improve alongside anyway. So unless you need to or want to output the already, I don't think output exercises are that necessary. And lastly, the Japanese to English translation exercises. They are by far the most common type of exercise, and in my opinion are also the biggest issue of Duolingo. Because constructing an English sentence from Japanese is completely different from understanding the Japanese sentence itself. I've been learning Japanese this way on purpose, and it doesn't work well with Duolingo. When I say kyo wa nani wo ka, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't translate it instantly in my head. Like my first thought isn't to translate it into English. My first thought is to have the thing first, like a normal person would. You know what I mean? I'm so hard to explain. Right now, Duolingo forces you to translate the sentence either by typing it or using the word bank. And there is a lot of debate between which is more effective for learning a language, but in my opinion, they are both terrible options for an input exercise. I feel like spending time on typing or constructing an English sentence at all is a complete waste of time. Ideally, I'd much prefer to have a flashcard style system, where you just reveal the translation when you're ready and decide for yourself whether or not you got it correct. I actually think that the sentences themselves are pretty decent. They have a lot of useful variety and can be entertaining. But once again, you're unfortunately stuck with this really inefficient way of reviewing them. There is honestly so much more I could talk about, like what's the best way to use Duolingo, differences between the mobile and web versions and other extra features they have. But at the same time, I feel like it doesn't really matter, because no matter how you use Duolingo, I feel like its effectiveness drops rapidly once you are no longer a complete beginner. So, my answer to the question of how long should you use Duolingo for is either for however long you feel like it or until you feel like it isn't providing you much value anymore. When you already have a baseline in the language, let's say a vocabulary of 3000 words, you should consider focusing primarily on consuming a lot of Japanese content, through which you can mine words and sentences, meaning that when you encounter words or expressions which you don't know, you can make Anki cards for them. And in general, getting lots of input in the language is probably the most important thing you can do, as it trains literally every single aspect of your Japanese in the most realistic way possible. And as Japanese is one of those languages which is so vast and so different from English, you pretty much have no choice but to train on thousands of hours of content to reach proper fluency. I don't think Duolingo is completely useless, and I don't think it's a complete waste of time either, but it's best at doing what it's designed to do, to get you started in the language in a beginner and casual friendly way. And like I said before, it all contributes in the long run, so if you enjoy using Duolingo, it's better than doing nothing. However, if you've already used Duolingo for a long time and are a bit hesitant to let it go, despite being at a level where you probably don't benefit as much from it anymore, remember why you started using it. While the daily strike system is great for helping you keep consistent, it can also turn into a trap of sunken cost. I actually thought of going for a thousand day streak, maybe even gilding the entire Japanese tree again and perhaps even getting rank 1 on the leaks feature. However, at the end of the day, I realized that I'm here to learn Japanese, not to play the game of Duolingo. So, after over 800 days with Duolingo, I think it's finally time for me to move on.